Hey everyone, Larissa here from Beekeeping Made Simple, and this uh, live post is about Varroa mites in the spring because um, springtime is a little bit different than other times, and it's important to to remember that springtime is when the hive is small and the queen is laying. the The goal of the hive at this time of year is to build up as fast as possible. They want to increase their population. Their goal isn't to bring in a honey their goal is to increase population so increasing population means that the queen bee has to be doing her thing and you don't want to mess with the pheromones she's releasing and they need pollen so first of all i always tell my students to constantly be testing for mites monthly not only so that you know if you have to treat so you're not just treating but knowing that you have to treat but also to see how well your treatments are doing and if a hive doesn't need treatment but um, testing for mites using the alcohol wash, which is what I recommend because that's the most accurate, isn't really good when you have a hive that's, you know, just a few frames of brood um, or a package or, uh, you know, a nuke that you just purchased. A five frame nuke still is something that you don't want to be killing 300 bees uh, just to see what your mite level is. So, um, what I recommend is actually doing the sugar shake, which is very similar to the alcohol wash. Instead of using alcohol, though, um, you're using powdered sugar. And when you use powdered sugar, you are um, not killing the bees. And when I was talking to Randy Oliver, who has done very many um, studies using these two different methods of um, testing for varroa mites, he did say that they've actually checked and the bees and they, they marked the bees before they put them in the cup for the powdered sugar. And those bees actually did survive even shaking them a whole lot with the powdered sugar. Um, so the powdered sugar will give you a number. It'll just be a little bit lower than what the actual number is. So um, once you have your number, that'll tell you whether you should be doing putting a treatment in or not. Um, now, you can hold off a little bit, but, you know, you just want to do the math. Usually these treatments are in the hive for six weeks. So when does your honey start coming in? The honey that you're going to be harvesting is that May, like early May. Then you want to count six weeks um, earlier, and that would bring you to mid-March is the latest possible you want to put a treatment in. If your honey isn't coming in until June, really, then you have until mid-April. Um and if you don't know when your honey is coming in, then just do it now and write these things down so that next year, you know. Um, and so, and if you don't want to do any kind of testing or you don't have the materials to do it, then just put in a treatment this year. Monitor your mite levels throughout the year and see for next year whether this is something you need to do. So once you have decided that you need to put in a treatment. Now keep in mind that even if your mite level is low, say you're getting like a two or a three, I would still recommend putting a treatment in because that a hive with a mite level of two is going to be three and probably like a month, four or five, and then um, it's going to be June, then it's gonna be July, and you're really not gonna to wanna to put a treatment in in the middle of summer when it's the middle of your honey harvest. So keep in mind, this mite level is going to continue to increase until you put a treatment in, which will not be probably until the end of summer after you've done your harvest. Okay, so as far as treatments are concerned, there's a lot of different kinds of treatments, but there's the treatments that use, um, they have a strong smell to them and they can, uh, interfere with the queen's pheromones that she's releasing. So the ones that are not recommended to use in the early spring, when it's very important that the hive population is increasing and the queen is laying, and you don't want to mess up with those pheromones, and you don't want to potentially cause a, the hive to go queenless, is formic acid especially. Any treatment that uses formic acid, um, it, you can it can cause your hive to go queenless, even if you do allow for adequate ventilation and stuff. Um, so the formic acid and also the apigard, which it uses thymol, those two use a really strong smell, and that can really mess with the queen um, laying. Also, those two are very much. Um, relying on a very specific temperature range. And so if at this time of year, it's gonna be in there for like say six weeks and you know, 
or like, yeah, Apigar, you, you have to put in a second treatment after like two or three weeks. Um, you have to keep in mind that even if you're putting this in, say, mid-March or early April, it's going to be in for six weeks. So by the time it's out, it might be early May, and the temperature might be fluctuating into temperatures that are well over 80-some degrees and too hot for it to be in the hive without causing the hive to abscond. And that's very common to happen for your hives to abscond um, because of those treatments being in the hive and it getting too hot. So those are treatments you really don't want to use this time of year. Apigard is one that is highly recommended in the early spring, um, especially if your temperatures fluctuate quite a bit and you're concerned about six weeks from now it being potentially in the high 80s in your where your bees are, at least in the mid 80s. And it also does not have a strong smell, so it doesn't interfere with the um, pheromones released by the queen and the brood rearing. Um, you can also use oxalic acid, but it is nowhere near as effective um, in the springtime when the queen is, has been laying for a while, uh, as opposed to when you use it in the late fall and winter time. Um, that being said, you can still use it. You just have to use it throughout multiple treatments. So you're going to, you know, administer it. I think it's like four or so times um, every like. 10-ish days or every week um, just so that you want to keep on getting the new bees because it does not the oxalic acid vapor does not go through the um the beeswax so all of those mites that are on those pupating bees which is where over 90 percent of the mites in your hive are they're hanging out on the pupating bees um, inside the comb uh they're not going to be affected by the oxalic acid. So you want to just keep on hitting the hive over and over again. You just don't want to do it too many times. Um, and that will uh, get rid of a decent amount of your varroa mites. So the apovar is usually the best for this time of year. It is not considered organic and it will, um, it uses amitraz and that is a, toxic chemical, so it will be affecting your beeswax. Um, so the comb in your hive this time of year isn't comb that you want to use for like body products <laughs> or things of that sort. But um, it is uh, what I usually do is any of that comb, I just put a P on the frames so that I know that those are frames that I do not want to be harvesting from at some point. Um, it might be just empty comb that I that the bees might be filling up with honey later on. So you just want to keep that in mind so you're not harvesting it and selling it and using that for honey. And so that's uh, what you want to do early springtime for your bees. And keep in mind that right now their goal isn't to bring in a lot of food for consumption for like honey, but they want the queen to lay as much as possible um, Chris is saying that he did oxalic acid every four to five days, five times in a row. It's been a really long time since I used that oxalic acid, um, in the summertime. So I can't really remember. Yeah. And, and that was another problem. If you have a lot of hives, it just takes forever to go and do that over and over and over again, week after week. Um, especially if it's every four to five days, if it's once a week and you can get out there every weekend, it's more manageable. But if you're going every four to five days, that's not maybe always on your day off um, or always on the weekends. So a little tricky, but um, if you really want to not put any harmful chemicals in the hive, uh, the Apigard, I mean, the Apovar doesn't harm the bees as far as I've found, but it is in not a, an organic substance like the oxalic acid and formic acid is. And then of course you want to do a mite test after the treatment's completely done because in some places people have found that the apovar is um, not as effective as it used to be. People leave it in their hives too often or they continue to use that as their main treatment over and over and over again. And the mites that survive in the hive are the ones that um, are resistant to that chemical and they continue to breed and then you just breed it you just bred a hive of um amitraz resistant mites <laughs> and so now your apovar isn't effective anymore so you always want to keep on using different treatments um and not the same one every single time and that one you can buy for like 30 bucks for a pack of 10 uh on amazon 
Man Lake, all of those places sell them and you can get them pretty fast and pretty easy and it's fairly cheap. Just make sure you wear gloves, okay? I've seen a lot of YouTube videos of beekeepers just throwing stuff in the hive. They're vaporizing hives with no mask on, touching the apovar with their bare hands. I just don't do it. Thanks for watching. Leave questions if you have them. And of course, if you have um, extra tips about the oxalic acid um, or other treatments that have worked well for you in the springtime, let me know. Thanks. Bye.